Hi everyone! For those of you who don't know me, I'm Penelope Pop, also known as Winnie Wong. A lot of my videos are centered around curating your lifestyle and living with the things that you need. Today marks a very important day in my life. I have hit a decade. It's not something that happens very often. You don't hit a decade very often, but I am turning 30. And whenever you hit a decade, not whenever, when you hit a decade, I like to think that you tend to reflect a lot about the decisions that you've made in the past and look back and also look forward to what is to come and that's exactly what is happening and hitting 30 I've, I've been thinking a lot about the things that I've done things that I've learned and how I'm going to take what I've learned and drive that to the future the first thing I wanted to do was just share some things that I have learned in the last 30 years of my life ever since I was an infant or a baby the things that I've learned and I wanted to impart some wisdom that I've learned. I'm not going to do 30 things that I've learned. I'm just going to share a couple of things that I feel are very important. I've just thought about all these tricks and lessons that I've learned that I feel that has been the most applicable to me. Number one is being able to problem solve. This is the number one thing that I like to share with almost everybody is that being able to problem solve will be able to help you well, you will be able to solve a lot of things in your life, resolve a lot of problems. Being able to come up with a solution on the spot, although it may not be the most ideal solution for you, it may not be something that you want. I think one thing that you need to realize is that anything that happens in your life, things aren't gonna go your way. And I think that goes back to how my characteristic was early in my early 20s. I'm talking as if I'm like ancient. When I was younger in my 20s, early 20s, I used to think a lot of the things were like black and white, right or wrong. I had the strong sense of this is right, this is wrong. That also left me with that urge to make sure that everything fits into this box. And what I have come to learn is that whenever you have things that are going on in your life, it's not gonna be the ultimate solution that you envision it to be. It's gonna be a bunch of things that you have kind of put into this pot and then it has grown into this beautiful product of all the things that you have done. So being able to come up with a solution with anything that you have encountered, any problem that comes your way is the best way to approach it. And I always like, I always like to give this example to students, although this might be not so applicable to everyone now, um, which is for example, like let's say you have an assignment that is due and the teacher asked you to print out your work. And sometimes I have students that are like, I couldn't print my work because you know I didn't have a printer. But the most important thing to remember is that it's not about having a printer. It's about thinking about how you can get to the same result as everybody else. Although you may not have a printer at home, how exactly are you gonna tackle the solution without a printer? And that is coming up with other solutions, which is maybe calling a friend or asking somebody, hey, do you have a printer? Can I use it to print something or going out somewhere to source a person that has a printer and paying them to print your work. There are so many different solutions and it doesn't mean that you need to have a printer in order to have a piece of work printed, but it's about coming up with various ways in which you can get to the same solution. It may not be the ideal path that you have envisioned it to be, but you have end up with the same result. So that's my very first tip. My second tip is, is being flexible. And this goes back to problem solving and the whole idea that not everything is going to turn out the way you want it to be and you need to be able to roll with the punches be flexible one thing that i've learned and that i've encountered so so many times is like whenever i do something a project that i want it never turns out the way i want it to be it's always something that like oh um something happened this person is missing something um we we don't have red we don't have this and one of the things is being able to adapt to a situation and roll with it, be, being flexible and learning that you have to go with whatever is coming your way or else you're just gonna slow you down or it's not going to, it's just gonna slow down the process. And you have to understand that things are never going to be perfect and things are never ever going to turn out your way. 
unless you are a perfect human being, but I that is a very, very small percentage of the population. And you either have to be lucky or it's a very situational thing. But learning to become flexible and learning to be more, being able to adapt to a situation has helped me grow in numbers of ways like i have evolved because i've been able to become flexible so that's tip number two my third tip gosh i have to keep looking back that's how bad my memory is okay quotes it's really ironic because i'm actually giving some advice but one of the things that i i actually think is really backwards is providing quotes to people. A lot of people tend to like to draw quotes that famous people say like Gandhi or something or Mother Teresa, you know, like she'll say something very, very vague and be like, to be virtuous, you have to embrace something. Uh, I don't know, I'm making something up, but basically the whole point is that like- I'm just gonna quote you now on that. <laughs> want to be virtuous. I just made that up on, on the spot, but basically, Quote, quotes are very situational. It cannot apply to every single person. That's why I really don't like it when somebody like gives me a quote because it may really resonate with them. In my situation, in my life, it may not work. I actually really, really think that like quotes don't work for everybody. And also this works hand in hand with the idea that not everybody's going to take your advice. There are you know, so many occasions when you talk to somebody and then they're going through something in their life and you're like, you can see the solution, you can see the path in which they could make their life a lot easier, but they're not necessarily going to listen to you. They're not necessarily gonna apply it because that's their path. That's my delivery. I ordered bubble tea. Oh, speaking of bubble tea, tip number four. Bubble tea. Twice no, a week. twice a week. Okay, anyways. What I wanted to say was that quotes are very situational and it doesn't apply to everybody. And it's the same with like giving advice to somebody. Not everybody's gonna take your advice or listen to what you have to say. You just have to let them go through with the process and learn through it. I mean, my mom has given me so much advice and I don't take everything because sometimes people just have to learn the hard way. It's just the way it is because that's just human nature. People are that wired that way because it's just the way things are. People want to be able to learn on their own. So whenever you're giving advice to somebody and they don't take it, understand that it's not because you are bad at giving advice or that they don't want to listen to you. It's just because they want to work it out their way first because they believe they know their situation the best and they also know their situation the worst at times. So you just have to let them work through it. And same with quotes. You also have to work through it yourself. See if it applies to you, see if it doesn't. It's just depending on your situation. And that is tip number three. Tip number four. This is something that I feel is super duper important. And mind you, all the tips that I'm giving right now, it doesn't necessarily apply to me. It doesn't necessarily mean that I am like the embodiment or I'm the perfect person to be sharing this, that I have really come to understand all these different things. I'm still learning, I'm still growing, I'm still evolving. There's so many things that I still need to perfect. And one of them actually is communication. Um, I definitely think that one of the key things to working out a relationship, working out anything in your life is being able to communicate great. Be a great communicator. I've like watched some crime videos and I like to watch like gossip channels. And one of the key things that is always lacking is the lack of communication. You've played a very simple game of like, pass the message, right? Any person that passes on the message, it always becomes skewed. Anything that you want to communicate needs to come from you. And one of the things that you also have to learn to master is the ability to deliver your message. This is one thing that I feel like I am lacking is that I'm actually really brutally honest. And sometimes I feel like, yeah, that's the best way because I'm just being honest. Sometimes the way people understand or grasp the message may not be the way I receive messages and I like the truth and I like the honesty. Some people actually, you know, need a little bit of a cushion. Some people need a little bit of a, you know, a pillow and be like, here, this is, but you still need to be honest. You just need to figure out what is the best way to approach the situation, but also communicating your thoughts. Why? It's true. <laughs> I need 
Many pillows. You need many pillows. <laughs> well, me, I'm just like, just tell me what it, what it is. Yeah. I just, for me, my type of personality is, I just like to hear it straight to the point. You know, like, it's funny because this goes back to my students and I actually tell, like, we always have feedback sessions. I always tell them, like, don't tell them it's nice. Don't tell them it's pretty. We all know it's pretty. You're just adding unnecessary words and sentences that they have to read. But people like hearing that. But sometimes I just want them to be constructive. I want to be like, how are you going to improve? How are you going to grow? What's going to take my work to the next level? And that's the way I approach it. And the way that perfectly captures my class is some student that actually drew a comic for me. And it's like, this is how the frame works. So basically it's like students getting feedback from one another and then the comic is like, oh, I wonder what, um, oh, I'm so happy with the feedback I got from my peers. I wonder what Miss Wong is gonna say. And then it's this image of me with these Harry Potter glasses, cause that's the way I look to them really like Harry Potter. And then like with a broom and the broom is an embodiment of honesty and it's like brutal honesty. So like I'm hitting them with the truth. I thought it was a hammer, it's a broom. A broom or a hammer, I don't know. But basically, hitting them with the brutal truth. But he told me that, my student told me that like, it's definitely helped him grow. So in some ways, like it works, but not, it doesn't work for everybody. Everything is very situational. Yeah, so like, this is actually the second time we're doing this video because the first time we did the video, when he was upset that I didn't tell her that she, it looked like her stomach was bulging. You can see she's trying to cover it right now. So what you should do when is... Film it again. No, like if you end up rolling with this video, you should share a screenshot from that last video and ask people what they think. Well, I did not notice your belly was bulging as you say. Yeah, but it's not, it's not that because I, I don't want, like, I, I appreciate... it. I... <laughs> I like embracing like the way the human body is and whatever. It's just, that's not the focus of the video. The focus is what I'm talking about. And I don't want so you're people- You're saying your stomach was bulging so much that it took away from the focus of the video. Well, it does to some people. Some <laughs> people- like the two hater comments in the YouTube video that you, <laughs> that you zoom in on. Scroll, scroll past the pretty comments. You're so pretty when you scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> Ah, you're so fat. Oh my God. Uh, no, it's just I want those people to understand it, but yeah, of course they'll never get they're never gonna get it You know, anyways, you're learning stuff. Well, I'm always learning that. <laughs> so, I'm a Forever student. Yeah, of Wanny school The next step that I have for everybody is never rush into things and always make sure that you break things down um, one of the things that I used to like doing when I worked was I'd like to like approach it with when it's in its entirety, like the whole monster. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm just gonna spend six hours that day just working on it. But sometimes being able to break down it into bits and pieces really helps you kind of think about how to um, grow and evolve that masterpiece. And I've learned to slow things down. Although I do rush some things, like I did experience rushing a process recently and it just reminded me that I should never do it again. Is this, uh, uh, is this the drilling fiasco? Did you try to rush and then you drilled your own hand? That and um, something else. <laughs> I like to be efficient. But sometimes you really have to know that like you have to think things step by step and really just break it down. And it's like that with like essays and stuff. I always tell students just work on it. Not like, obviously it's so tempting to work on it overnight and be done with it. But being able to think about each thing, like even in my planner, I have big, big goals and small goals. The big goal is your ultimate goal, the thing that you want to do. But how exactly do you get there? Um, you work on the small goals. Like my big goal is to be able to create five different videos. Creating five videos is not something easy. So how am I going to exactly approach it? So you break down the process. How do you get to a five video process? Number one, you plan for it. Number two, you start filming it. Number three, you start editing it. And then number four, you release it on different times. So 
just being able to break it down really helps you process the stuff. So never rush into things, always break it down, take it bit by bit. And that leads me to my very, very last tip. Pat's like, yeah, this is over. We filmed this twice. Oh, it's not true. Everyone's <laughs> just enjoying it also. Yeah. And that leads me to my very last point is that if you want something, you have to get it yourself. It's okay to ask for help, but that is ultimately not the answer or solution to um, getting what you want. Um, I would never... The past me, like I would always want to like wait for somebody to get a response or hear what they have to say. If I don't hear from them in a day, I'm already going to come up with something new. I'm going to come up with another way in which I can reach my goal because nobody is... You can only rely on yourself. You can only rely on yourself and nobody is looking out for you but yourself. And that sounds a little bit brutal, but it's very, very true. And um, like... I'm going to share a really personal story, although it's kind of funny that if you think about it is when I was really young, you know, I mean, everybody dreams about being a model and like, that's what I really wanted to do when I was 15, 14. And I definitely like didn't have the look to be a model or the height nor the height, but you know, it was still a dream for me and it's something that I wanted to do. but. You know, you have to come to realize that you have to work with what you have. And what I had was not the standard or stereotypical look of a model. And, you know, I always like waited for an agency like, oh, I hope they pick me. I hope they do this. No, you don't wait for these people to do it. You create these opportunities yourself. And I wanted to create opportunities for myself, which is creating avenues in which I can share my own message and say, here I am. Um... I may not be a model, but I'm doing, I'm doing other things and I'm sharing other things. And eventually like you grow out of that need and want of something and it evolves to something different. And now here I am doing YouTube and it's a different platform and not be modeling, but it's not something I wanted in the end. You realize that your th needs and wants evolve with the choices that and the path that you have created for yourself. So don't bank on this one idea, this, this goal that you have, but always adapt and grow with it. And speaking of adapt and growth, almost there, Patrick. No, I'm... <laughs> almost there. Um, I'm good, yo. I'm good. One of the things that I wanted to grow with is also my channel um, and evolve. I always don't believe in stagnant growth. I, I don't believe in stagnant channel or anything, any platform that I work with. I believe in forever growth. Looking back, I've been doing YouTube for the past three years. And in social media terms, that is a very, very long time. And I've done weekly videos. I've produced different things. I've tried different things that have worked and haven't worked. And one thing that I wanted to do is just take, not like take a break or quit, is you have to learn to let go and move forward and evolve. And one of the things that I'm going to be letting go of as I turn 30 is Penelope Pop. Penelope Pop always and forever will have, it's like I'm breaking up with somebody, but will always have a place in my heart. But as I grow my channel, as I try to shift directions, as I evolved, I wanted um, my channel to be more personal. The original goal of Penelope Pop was to create an alter ego so that people wouldn't kind of connect me and my personality. But as I have created my channel, I've, you know, kind of shared a lot of my personal stories and it didn't really make sense for me to have Penelope Pop and share that side. Penelope Pop was supposed to be whimsical. It was supposed to share this like fun and colorful lifestyle. And, in, and that's not the trajectory that I have um, it has led for my channel and Penelope Pop will be there. I'll still create my art and still have it there. But we moving forward, I wanted to just have my name, Winnie Wong, as my represent my channel. So what I'm sharing with you is that um, within the next month, you're going to see a lot of changes in my channel. Not a lot. I'm not being really dramatic, but 
you're going to start seeing changes within my channel. I'm going to be changing the look. I'm going to be removing videos. I'm going to find, be curating things that are relevant to my thought process. And I wanted things to be more authentic and personal and really drive the idea of sharing my personal thoughts. And, and it's not so like stagnant. I wanted it to be a little bit more fun and um, a little bit more casual. So that's the direction I wanted to take as I move forward with YouTube. And I hope that you guys go along the journey with me and let me take this one month transition period of, well not let me, I'm going to be doing it. So I'm going to be just taking a step back for a month and really rewiring everything and coming back with fresher perspective. Um, there are just so many things that go on in my life and one of the best things that you can do for yourself is just take a break. And although in YouTube algorithms, that might not be beneficial to me, but um, for my personal well-being and also being able to transition and evolve, I'm just going to be taking a step back and doing more of the back end aspect and really rethinking the type of things that I want to share with everybody. Moving forward, Winnie Wong's channel will be more personal. It will still continue to share my organizing thoughts and how I organize things or curate things in my life, but it's going to be a little bit more casual and a little bit more me. And I hope that you guys will enjoy that and look forward to it. So ending this video, I just wanted to thank everybody who has followed me through this journey. Um, we are 200,000 subscribers strong. And without you guys, there would be no today or Penelope pop. It will, there would be, it would just be like, it wouldn't be what it is because I really take everybody's comments to heart. I really read through everything, even the bad ones. Like I really think about. <laughs> oh yeah, you do read those bad ones. <laughs> yeah. I really read them and I think about like what I can do to improve. I don't just be like, oh, I don't care. I actually do care a lot. And I do reflect on how I can always grow. So your comments mean a lot to me. Your following, subscribing, really sharing what you have learned and also sharing your thoughts of what I can do to improve really mean a lot to me. And without you guys, there wouldn't be the Penelope Pop that is today. So thank you so much for following me on this journey. And I really appreciate all of you who have been with me through this journey. And I don't wanna make this too emotional, but thank you so much. And I will see you guys in one month. See ya. Bye bye. Okay, and exhale. <laughs> <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye, I'm Shamu. <laughs>